Second question here, Afro Ono, what is the energy and the whereabouts of Afro Ono? What are the messages here? What are the highest purest messages, the spiritual messages? What is the energy for Afro Ono? Oop, and his whereabouts. What is this energy, please? Afro Ono and his whereabouts. Please show me. Uh oh. Please show me clearly. Cards, please. We have the Wheel of Fortune here. that I say that I'm scared of it. When I say it's creepy, it's it's um, one of those cards that I'm like, you wanna keep your eyes out for it. And the more that you do research on it, the more that you sit with it and connect with it, the more that you'll see the symbolism behind it is really, really profound. And 
in all honesty, I, I have seen and I feel as though this is one of those cards that connects to the end times in reality, and I'll explain why. So the Wheel of Fortune card is on surface level. If you go to any tarot book in Barnes & Noble or pull it off of Amazon, most, most likely you will see that people only mentioning the fact that this card is connected to luck and changing circumstances, and maybe some dive a little deeper into the idea of karma. And that is so true. If you look into the card symbolism, it's not only connected to those things of luck and changing circumstances because it is a wheel that is always moving, but it is absolutely 100% connected to karma. With that being said, not only does the Wheel of Fortune connect to karma, but when I look at this card, I instantly think about the natal node, which in astrology is the point of karma. And um, and also the wheel of astrology, the wheel itself is astrology, the astrological wheel, the natal chart. So astrologers, myself, and other astrologers out there, we pull a wheel in order to see where the, the planets are currently moving within the chart and how they impact us here down on earth. And karma is something that is destined to happen. It's a point in time and history that things are divinely aligned and things come in with perfect, perfect timing. And that's what it is that we're looking at when we look at the astrology charts. People have pulled astrology charts since the beginning of time to try and figure out the end of time by looking to see when certain um, planets or when certain signs are being aligned or aspected in, in specific ways. And then that's when we say, okay, this is a time where this is most likely the end of the world or when we're gonna see a shift in humanity and consciousness. That in itself is ripe within this tarot card with the wheel in the center of the card showing again the connection to astrology. Now that's not what's creepy. What's creepy is the fact that we've got these four symbols in each corner of the card. Now when you are looking and studying the tarot, you have to look at the meaning and you have to look at everything. There is no, nothing in the tarot on the, in the image of the tarot deck that doesn't stand for something and doesn't mean for something. Don't ignore the signs that are in the tarot because everything, I'm not kidding, is there for a very specific reason. From the numbers to the colors to the actual imagery. Now, let me go and take a step back, starting with numbers. Numbers are everything. Numerology is everything. Every single card within the entire tarot deck is in alignment with the perfect number to represent the perfect energy connected to that perfect element. Not kidding. So this card in particular is a part of the major arcana showing major themes within our lives. And it is ruled by the number 10. The card before that is the number 9, which is actual completion. Number 10 is 1 and 0 combined together. So it's not actually the ending. It's the ending that comes with a new beginning, which means that something, a cycle, a, something is new being born from the end. The card before this is the hermit card, which is the card who goes into, has his cloak over his head and goes into like a hibernation mode in order to seek and understand and to gain knowledge. That's huge, but that's something that I will leave just for the Sacred Circle Tarot School. Um, but the card before it is the number nine, the hermit, the card that seeks to know, to understand, to find uh, information and also enlightenment.
the full. There's a, a huge shift, a huge change. Wow, Major Arcana. Hello and welcome. The Fool Tarot card. What does it mean in the upright and reversed position? The card shows a young man walking toward a cliff. He is accompanied by a small dog. In the upright position, the Fool stands for a new beginning in life. At the same time, he encourages you to live out your spontaneity in everyday life. Try to look at the world through the eyes of a child. In the reversed position, the Fool warns you against risky behavior with unexpected consequences. Likewise, you should not step into the world too naively. Otherwise, you will easily overlook possible dangers. A tendency to overconfidence is also a warning from the Fool. Change. Wow. Major Arcana's here. Okay, there's a huge shift, a huge change. That's coming in here, okay? This is gonna um, open someone up or open people up, I heard, to a new beginning. In one minute or less, got the fool here, the fool card. Mm, this, this is a dynamic card. This card is loaning to the people that you think don't know anything, that are walking around with a wealth of knowledge within themselves and wisdom, and we look down on them, we don't respect them, but they're the ones that have the courage to say things that really change things. Are you a fool? Say, don't play the fool of someone else, but the reality is being the fool is also connected to the whole idea of April Fool. We know that April 1st begins the, the truth of when the year really starts, when spring springs up. That was all changed to put us off timing with life. So the truth is, the fool knows the truth about when the time really starts. Thank you. 
This can have something to do with um, something that has to do with spirituality. Okay, some type of divination here with the temperance. Okay, balancing the light and the dark here. I'm getting with the uh, sun and the moon. What else? What is this? One more. Ten of Pentacles here. Yeah, it's going to allow for like with the Knight of Cups on the bottom of the deck. Strength. What is this? What is this? Will of Fortune, please. The Knight of Wands. The Knight of Wands. What's going on? Some type of um, like forward movement taken here. Yeah, with the wow. Look at that. With the chariot. It's like whatever it is. Um, whatever this is that's changing. There's a shift here. Okay, this could be for uh, families in particular or like specifically for families here what is this will something is being rebalanced here yeah six of swords forward movement this is like literally angels um spirit gods ancestors Okay, anything like that, uh, moving things to, this could have something to do with an emperor, okay, again, somebody that sits on a, um, some type of throne here, somebody that's in power. It was an early morning discovery in the sky over Milwaukee. What's this, Matt? I'm nerding out a little bit, Jaren. This is Jupiter. And if you look closely, you can see three of its many moons. Matt Salimian, News Chopper 12, sharing this exclusive video with our morning news viewers. Next week, it's going to be the closest that it is. Jupiter is the largest planet in the solar system. You can fit um, 1,316 Earths inside Jupiter. The planet size alone helps it shine bright, but its placement during orbit matters. It happens when the Earth is between the Sun and Jupiter. Jupiter's at opposition on September 26 means opposite the Sun. Bob Bonador runs the planetarium at the Milwaukee Public Museum. He says the opposition happens every 13 months. And it's bright because it's a little closer to the Earth in its orbit, 
uh, about 20% closer and it just shines brighter than any star in the night sky. NASA reports this is the closest Jupiter will be in orbit to Earth in almost 60 years. When you're stargazing over the next week, all you really need are your eyes. You'll even be able to spot some other planets too. About say 7:30, 8 o'clock or so, look for Jupiter in the east and then up in the southeast you can see the planet Saturn. Not quite as bright, it's twice as far away. And then for people who are up a little later, you'll see the planet Mars rising. In Milwaukee, Dodgy Aswad, WISN 12 News. The Milwaukee Public Museum hosts Wisconsin stargazing at the planetarium to help the public learn more about the solar system and constellations. But this change is going to really help move things forward, okay? There's a shift here. What's this full card? We have the three of pentacles. What is this ten of pentacles? There could be another message here about... Um, Someone here like shifting and changing things for like legacy wealth or legacy stability here. What is this Ten of Pentacles? It's like take a leap, move forward, work on something. Yeah, we have the Temperance. Somebody's like, okay, because this is like legacy here. Somebody's like ancestor or, I don't know, spirit guy, something like that. Could be like um, fighting for this, fighting for something to work out. What is this? But things are going to be balanced, yeah. Stay alive, stay alive. 
Yeah, we have the Nine of Pentacles, okay, and then the Four of Wands. Living peacefully, that's what I heard. What is this Nine of Pentacles? King of Wands here. A fire sign could be significant, okay? This could be, um, or there's, you know, something about action, okay? Movement. Seeing something from a different perspective here. Okay, there could be a Sagittarius here specifically. Someone here is like extremely confident, okay, attractive, very independent. What else? Someone here is like literally um, like having the strength and the courage to create wealth. For their family or um, some type of longevity here. All right.